McLaren have taken the Formula 1 world by storm as of late, after an impressive, to say the least, jump in performance, going from the middle of the pack to third fastest in Austria, managing to upset a lot of the leading cars, before outright beating them at the very next round in Britain, even giving the old conquering Red Bull of Max Verstappen a hard time in both qualifying and the race. Their form also carried through to Hungary and Belgium, even if the results weren't exactly optimal, especially in the former. The result at Silverstone, though, is particularly noteworthy, given the team scored more points that Sunday than all the other weekends up to that point combined. All this is a testament to how good a job everyone has done back at the factory. And while it may seem surprising, and for a good reason, this is not the first time the team from working managed to perform a 180 with their car mid-season and save what looked like a lost cause. Our story starts back in late 2008, where McLaren and their long-time rivals Ferrari were locked in a fierce battle for the Drivers' and Constructors' Championships, meaning they were forced to develop those year's cars further into the season than most. This left them with less time to prepare for the 2009 regulations, featuring perhaps the biggest set of error changing the sport had seen in decades. On top of this, long-time McLaren team principal, Ron Dennis, decided to step down at the end of 08, handing the role over to Martin Whitmarsh. With all that going on, it was no wonder the team went to pre-season testing with one of the slowest cars in the field. Paddy Lowe, McLaren engineering director at the time, said it was a bit of a shock as the team realized it was two and a half seconds down on the fastest time. Scrambling to find a solution, McLaren desperately tried to save the situation by bringing various upgrades to the first race in Melbourne and making plenty of short-term fixes to the car until Spain in the hope of clawing back as much performance as they could. Despite a pointless first race, thanks to a disqualification for lying to the stewards about Lewis Hamilton and Jano Trulli swapping positions during a late race safety car after the former went wide, the team finished in the top 8 for the following three races, securing a best result of 4th in the final of those in Bahrain, amassing a total of 13 points, enough to sit 4th in the championship, but less than 3 times the amount serious leaders Braun had after the same 4 rounds. Things didn't improve for McLaren when their fears were realized at the Spanish Grand Prix, where most teams brought their first major upgrades of the season, leaving the team from working on the back foot once again. From Spain until Great Britain, McLaren scored a single point, courtesy of Heike Kovalainen, falling from 4th to 6th in the standings, behind Ferrari, who was also suffering its worst start to a season in years. Things got so bad for the British outfit that Lewis Hamilton, the reigning world champion at the time, went on a rather public radio outburst while battling the Renault of Nelson Piquet Jr. for a position well outside the points during the Turkish Grand Prix. McLaren's underlying problem in 2009, much like this year, was a distinct lack of overall downforce, a result of the aforementioned circumstances leading up to the start of the season. Even then, the team lost further ground to its rivals by sticking to a fundamentally flawed development path that needed changing early on. This only became more evident by the fact they missed the double diffuser trick pioneered by Braun, Williams and Toyota. Still, this was a championship winning team for a reason and they wouldn't go down without a fight. Alongside the short-term track fixes, McLaren also put a much more thorough and robust development program in place, with the goal of closing the gap to the front. The road back to the top wasn't easy, with the team accelerating designing and production of plenty of parts, going through as many as five different front wing designs, and working tirelessly for months so everything would be ready for Mercedes' home Grand Prix at the Nürburgring. The British outfit showed up at the track with a brand new aero package, courtesy of a new front and rear wing, as well as a new floor, with further aerodynamic and suspension upgrades planned for after the summer break. As team principal Martin Whitmarsh put it, sometimes you have to step backwards to go forwards. While that particular race in Germany wasn't a success, as Hamilton suffered a puncture on lap 1 and the time loss was too great to recover, the Brit recorded his and the team's first win of the year at the next round in Hungary, as well as the first win for the brand new KERS, short for Kinetic Energy Recovery System, of which McLaren was one of the early adopters. Further success followed with podiums in Valencia, Japan, Brazil, and another win in Singapore, while Hamilton secured four pole positions at the European, Italian, Singapore, and Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. 
There were still some bad luck surrounding the team, with DNFs in Spa, Monza and Yas Marina all costing at least a strong points finish, if not more, while a pit stop error in Valencia cost Hamilton the win. Even after this, McLaren managed to score a total of 57 points in 8 races, over 4 times as much as they did in the first half of the season, and they beat the Royal Nemesis Ferrari to third in the constructor standings by a single point, while Hamilton also beat the Scuderia's Kimi Raikkonen to fifth in the Drivers' Championship by the same margin. Whether or not McLaren can remain as competitive as they were in Silverstone remains a mystery for now, but if history is anything to go by, and it usually is in F1, then there's plenty of reason to believe the team from working have well and truly turned the season round.